Solving skinny fat is confusing because there's so much conflicting advice out there that most guys end up doing nothing anyway and procrastinate because the process seems like this massive mountain that they'll never be able to climb. I know this because I've done that myself. Over the past four years, I've managed to solve skinny fat using science. And in this video, I'm gonna break down the best and worst ways to fix skinny fat based on what the data suggests and what actually works in my personal experience. Because if you do not learn to fix skinny fat properly, then you will stay stuck in the same body, grow frustrated, and never be confident with your shirt off. Body recomposition. Now, in theory, it's a great idea. And it's basically where you can gain muscle and lose fat at the same time. And yes, it is possible. And the research backs this up. Studies like the 2016 paper from the Journal of Sports Nutrition shows that beginners, returning lifters, or overweight individuals can gain muscle and lose fat simultaneously when following resistance training combined with proper protein intake. But here's the issue. Most skinny fat guys are in this weird middle ground, and you probably are too. You're not lean enough to confidently bulk, but at the same time, you're obviously not muscular enough to look good from just cutting straight away. And while recomposition can technically work, it's just painfully slow, which means progress takes longer, and it means it's harder to stay consistent, harder to stay motivated, and just easier to quit, especially if you don't see visible changes quickly, which is why I personally don't like it, and I'm putting built body recomposition in C tier. It's not useless, but for most people watching this, it's not gonna be optimal for you. If you're unsure on whether to bulk or cut, or even recomposition for the first stage of fixing skinny fat, then I've linked to free skinny fat flow chart down below and it will allow you to make that first step in the easiest way possible mini cuts mini cuts are short aggressive fat loss phases typically lasting around four to six weeks and the main goal is to reduce excess body fat now when you're skinny fat you have just enough fat to not look defined and not enough muscle where you actually look muscular and that's where a mini cut works brilliantly because it creates a more effective setup for a lean bulk after you cut which is the most important part of fixing skinny fat because the reason you're skinny fat is that you don't have enough muscle to actually look good even when you're bulked or when you've cut down. And that's why I love mini cuts as well because for fixing skinny fat, they act like a reset button where you can completely reset your progress and start from a clean slate. From a practical standpoint, a four to six week aggressive cut has been shown to retain muscle mass if protein is high and your training is on point. And that's coming from Helms et al 2014. That means you're not just getting leaner, but you're also priming your body for better long-term growth. Now there's three components to having a successful mini cut, and that is being in around a thousand calorie deficit, eating around one gram per pound of body weight in protein, and then capping it to max six weeks, because any longer than that, it becomes a normal cut, and it might start messing around with your hormones and your muscle retention at that point. So for me, mini cuts go in A tier for fixing skinny fat. Dirty bulking. Dirty bulking is where someone eats in a large surplus with little regard for food quality under the belief that more food equals more muscle. Now, if you're skinny fat, this is one of the absolute worst diabolical strategies that you can follow because the scale is going to go up quickly, but it doesn't mean that your muscle's going up. It just means that you're probably just gaining more body fat. Now, Garth et al. showed this in 2013 when he studied on athletes and he found that a large surplus didn't gain more muscle than those in a modest surplus. They just gained more fat. And I've done this myself, so I'll put it up on the screen. Literally, that should be motivation not to do what I did. So that's why dirty bulking is going straight into F tier, it's outdated, it's sloppy, and it just ruins your progress long term. Cutting. Cutting is where people drop their calories for a long period of time in the hopes of looking muscular. And for most skinny fat guys, this is a trap. I know this because I made the same exact mistake myself. I thought that if I lost weight, then I'd reveal abs. However, what happened is that I just ended up looking like a smaller skinny fat version of my previous self. So I dieted down, I dropped the weight, and I just looked awful because I didn't have any muscle to begin with and I just lost it completely. That's because cutting only works if there's something worth revealing in the first place. Therefore, you actually need muscle before you cut. A 2010 study from Stokes et al found that beginners find it really hard to retain or grow muscle during a cut because they don't know how to train properly and they don't know how to eat properly to retain muscle. So what should you do instead? If you need to trim excess body fat, then you need to go into a mini cut like we previously discussed and try and get into a lean bulk as quick as you can. You need to learn how to train hard, nail your nutrition, and then cut later when there's actually something worth revealing. That's why cutting for me with no muscle will go straight into D tier. It seems like progress, but you're actually just slowing down results and slowing down the process of fixing skinny fat. Lean bulking. Lean bulking is when you eat in a small calorie surplus, which is just enough to build muscle without gaining unnecessary body fat like you would in a dirty bulk. This is the GOAT strategy, in my opinion, for fixing skinny fat, especially after a mini cut if your body fat is on the higher side. The main issue with being skinny fat is that you're under muscled. You don't need extreme fat loss. You need more muscle mass to actually transform your physique and get rid of that skinny fat look. 
and lean bulking creates a perfect environment for this. There was a study by Slater in 2013, and he found that athletes in a modest surplus gained more lean mass without significant fat gain than those in a large surplus. And the beauty about lean bulking is that it's sustainable. You can stay in this phase for months, maybe even 12 months at a time. So you can build muscle and you don't have to cut, which creates the perfect environment for a long period of time. And here's how to implement it. You wanna be in a slight calorie surplus, so you wanna be in about 100 to 300 calories over your maintenance calories you want to eat one gram per pound of body weight in protein and you want to train hard to failure focusing on progressive overload every time you're in the gym and that's why for me lean bulking goes straight into s tier it's the most efficient sustainable and it's the proven way to fix skinny fat and if you're unsure whether you should start by mini cutting or go straight into a lean bulk then i've built again the free skinny fat flow chart that breaks it down completely in the description below fat diets Fat diets are things such as keto, intermittent fasting, carnivore diet, carb cycling, low carb, low fat, paleo diet, like you name it. Any TikTok trend that tries to make you follow this certain food philosophy, they basically don't work. People hop on them thinking that they found this magical diet and they found this magical shortcut to fixing skinny fat and revealing abs. But I'm here to tell you that the only reason why they work is because they follow calories in, calories out. The issue with fad diets is that they distract you from the actual fundamentals that you should be focusing on. You start hyper-focusing on meal timing, food restrictions or clean eating, and you completely ignore training intensity, progressive overload, total calories and protein intake. The things that actually matter for fixing skinny fat. There was a 2017 meta-analysis by JAMA, -A. Like, I don't know why that's, that's a struggle for me, but they basically compared low carb, low fat, paleo diets, and they found that there was no significant difference in terms of weight loss. The only real key was adherence, so how well someone could stick to the diet over time. This is why you should choose foods that actually help you hit your calorie and protein goals for the day. You need to learn how to eat flexibly and sustainably and focus on training and building muscle, not just restricting yourself. The goal is to build habits that you can stick to for life. So could you eat the same thing every day for the rest of your life? Could you eat this diet? Um, if you can't, then you shouldn't be focusing on it. And that's why fat diets for me are going straight into D tier. They might give you like great short-term weight loss goals, but at the end of the day, they won't help you fix skinny fat and you'll probably end up rebounding and more confusing than ever. Not a very good idea. If it fits your macros. If it fits your macros, is the opposite of a fad diet. Instead of cutting out entire food groups or obsessing over clean eating, if it fits your macros is simple. As long as your daily protein, carbs, fats, and calories are all the same, then the food sources don't matter as much. And when you're lean bulking or mini cutting, this flexibility is really needed to stay on plan. It means you can eat like a normal human and you can still make serious progress without losing your mind. If it fits your macros, keeps you from becoming hyper-focused on food or falling into all or nothing thinking. Studies actually back this up as well. This is gonna be very wordy, but there was a 2016 paper from the journey from the Journal of International Society of Sports Nutrition, and it showed that when calories and protein are equated, food choice has little effect on the body composition outcome. This basically means that whether you're eating chicken and rice or a more flexible diet, the results are the same as long as the macros are equal. But here's the key, it's flexibility within reason. You can't just eat all of that food from McDonald's. You still want most of your calorie intake to be nutrient dense whole foods, but if it fits your macros, gives you a bit more room to live. You can go out for meals, you can enjoy a snack, and you can still hit your goals and make some great progress. This is massive for adherence, especially when fixing skinny fat takes months and not weeks. If you're constantly feeling restricted, the odds of burning out or binging are way higher, and if it fits your macros, removes this stress completely. That's why, for me, it's an easy A-tier strategy. It's not magic, but when paired with solid training and structure, it helps you build a lean, muscular physique without hating your life in the process. Cardio, some people think it's the holy grail of fat loss, and some people think that if they do it when they're bulking, it's gonna completely kill their gains. But the funny thing is, is that they're both wrong. Cardio is just simply a tool, and it allows you to burn extra calories, but it doesn't inherently burn fat. You lose fat when you're in a calorie deficit and you can get into this deficit through cardio or diet or even both. There's research done in 2003 by Donnelly et al. And they found that cardio without a calorie deficit does not produce meaningful fat loss. It's essentially the overall energy balance through nutrition that matters the most. Now on the flip side, if you're bulking and adding in some light cardio, like walking, cycling, or even some sports, that won't kill your gains. 
In fact, moderate cardio can actually improve recovery, insulin sensitivity, and cardiovascular health, which essentially means that your training is going to be better, your nutrient partitioning is going to be better, which in simple terms means that you're going to make more gains, which is the main problem with you being skinny fat is that you're under muscle, so you need more gains. So if you enjoy cardio, do it. If you hate it, then just don't really bother with it. You should be prioritizing how hard you train, how well your nutrition is, and how well you're sleeping. These are the things that actually matter the most. So for me, that's why I'm going to put cardio in C tier. It's useful, but it's not essential, and it's definitely not worth obsessing over. And if you're not sure whether you should be bulking or cutting right now, then there is a link to my free skinny fat flow chart down below, and it'll help you make that first step in fixing skinny fat. 10 minute ab circuits. Now these frustrate me so much. I can't even describe how much the influencers annoy me when they do this. When they post on TikTok or YouTube, they get millions of views. And it's because people are like, are hopelessly doing these 10 minute ab circuits in the hopes of getting like abs. And then in your case, fixing skinny fat as well. And it doesn't actually work. The reason why it annoys me so much is because I fell for it as well. I used to do 100 sit ups a day and it just didn't fix skinny fat. And I just wasted all my time because that's not how you actually get a six pack. You can't gain a six pack or fix skinny fat by doing ab circuits. So I'm gonna break it down in a different video because I don't have enough time to do it in this video. So it's gonna be somewhere on screen now. And it's a must watch if you wanna go from skinny fat to six pack. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that.